Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to highlight a video that I'm happy, humbled, and honored to say is made by a colleague and friend in the industry of independent repair. This is The Coder. He has a great YouTube channel where he does a lot of different repairs, and he does repairs on certain items that I don't do repairs on, but he has a very similar setup to me. In this video, he's talking about why a lot of the Xbox Series consoles fail, and why this console's failures are a lot more offensive than older console failures. And I wanted to bring this up because this really goes back to this you will own nothing and be happy thing that we talk about a lot here on this channel. The TLDR of this video, and I think it's really important to watch, is that this uses an NVMe M2 SSD. Now, SSDs are where parts. Eventually, if you keep using it, you keep writing data, reading data, using it in a warm environment on a regular basis, it will die. This is just the way of the world. Hard drives die, SSDs die. Now, when it dies, you just think, well, I'm just going to replace it with another one, right? wrong because there is a hidden partition that has a key on it if you replace that ssd it's not going to work because that key is tied to that specific motherboard meaning that you have to send the console back to microsoft for an out of warranty repair which can cost them you up to 299 dollars so if your original ssd has failed and rather than fail in a graceful manner where you can use a tool like dd rescue to make a perfect clone to another ssd and it fails in a catastrophic manner like 99 percent of the ssds in steve and chris's queue for data recovery uh, you're stuck with a console that you have to send to microsoft in order to do something as basic as an SSD swap because your SSD was paired to the board with this lovely design that they decided to use on this particular console. Now I know what some of you are thinking. This is misinformation. This video is wrong. I took an SSD from another Series X and I put it in mine after mine failed and it worked. Wait for the next firmware update, bro. Wait for the next firmware update and it will refuse to boot. This is a serious problem. You should be able to have access to whatever tooling is necessary and required to repair the new SSD that you purchase to the motherboard of your device so that regardless of it getting a firmware update, it will boot. Creating the device in a way that when a wear part dies, the device itself is essentially committed suicide unless you give Microsoft $300 is, in my opinion, a steaming pile of bullshit. So you cannot replace the SSD in the console that you purchased. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Well, I'm one of those people that backs everything up, even my console. You're an idiot for not backing up your console. If you had made a clone, if you had made a clone of your SSD in your console, then it, you you wouldn't have an unfixable thing. This is your fault, you pleb. Obviously, if you were a real man like me that drives a Dodge Ram 3500 HD and has big muscles and and yeah, you would have backed up your console because that's what the comments are going to say. As I went over in a video that I did very recently, a lot of people like to get the quick dopamine hit of dunking on people that they believe to be their inferior to make themselves feel better rather than actually address the person who's causing the problem. That doesn't work because, as he says in this video, the key changes when the system software is updated or reinstalled. So let's say that you had actually taken that drive out of your console and then a complete DD rescue clone to another SSD. Preparing for the day that your SSD in your console dies, it doesn't matter. The key change is when the system software is updated or reinstalled. As a user of my channel mentions, you can make a backup or a clone today, but next time the console updates, the key is changed and your backup is useless. Better take the console apart again and make another. Microsoft can change the SSD in your console. You can't. The only way to keep this going is to clone the SSD inside your console every single time there's an update or reinstall. And if you don't and the SSD dies, you're screwed and you're stuck doing what the coder is doing in this video. I think that this requires a lot more attention than what it's currently getting. And I know somebody's going to say that there's probably some specific design reason that they did that. And my argument would be, why? These are design choices. You have to make a choice to design something in a manner where a wear part is only going to be replaceable by the manufacturer. But more importantly, even if you back up the wear part so that you can replace it yourself, you have to back it up every single time you update. Is it technically possible? Is it technically possible to have a backup system in place to where you can replace the SSD yourself? Yes. Is it also true that creating a system that requires that you clone your SSD to another every time you update your system so that you can replace the hardware that fails in the future yourself rather than send it back to Microsoft, reasonable or user-friendly? I would argue, no. 
Thank you very much to the coder for pointing this out. And I would highly suggest that you subscribe to his channel if you want to check out the type of repairs that he does that I used to stream on this channel and admittedly got tired of doing because I was doing those videos for 10 years and got bored of it. He does a lot of really cool repair videos and uh, I think that you'd find a lot of them interesting to watch. He also has a service that he offers if you're in Europe and you want the type of repairs that I do at my shop but you don't want to ship it across the country. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something, something to consider before you buy a Microsoft console. Do you want to buy a device where the SSD is not user replaceable in an easy and simple way? And again, the question that I will continue to ask you when people say, Lewis, you're dumb. There's a design reason for that. Okay, what is the reason? But above all, for whose benefit? For whose benefit was a wear part designed in a way where it has to be cloned on a regular basis to ensure that when that wear part dies, you will be able to replace it with another part that you buy on Newegg or Amazon or Best Buy or Micro Center or something like that. Why? And for whose benefit? Because 99% of the time when stuff like this happens, the person benefiting is not you. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.